everybody, welcome back to Witch Fix. I have a little confession to make before we start this episode. So I watched The Witches, the 1990 version of the movie, several weeks ago, courtesy of Hertfordshire Libraries. Not sponsored. Um, uh, because my mum managed to find it on DVD there. I couldn't find it on any streaming service for free, which really annoyed me because I know I'd seen it there previously and it just disappeared. But I watched it a couple of weeks ago and then I've been like slowed under with hay fever and just not feeling very well and there being a heat wave and I haven't bothered to record it, which means that I'm now using like really old notes and can't really remember a lot about the film. So apologies in advance if this ends up being super weird and a weird review, but I wanted to get it down and I very much did not want to watch the movie again because who has the time to keep doing that? Anywho, today we're looking at the 1990 version of The Witches. We've looked at the 2020 version. I've talked a little bit about the novel. So here we go into the movie. This obviously stars Angelica Houston um, as the Grand High Witch. I'd forgotten Rowan Atkinson was in this movie. That was a nice surprise. I also found out from like the, the logos at the beginning of the film that Jim Henson was involved, which makes so much sense because there's so many fucking puppets in this film and they are honestly like the best thing about it. So hats off there. I also Googled what happened to the boy who plays Luke in this because this is the only movie where that character has a name. He's not just the boy. He was apparently in three movies and is now a golf caddy. So good for him living his dreams. And I can't really think of anyone else in the movie. So we're just going to go in. So the opening of the film has my favourite story from the book in it, which is the one about the girl and the painting. So I'm happy about that. It has all of that like Norway setting that is missing from the more modern version of the movie. And I just really like it. It kind of grounds it in something that is not, not only connected to the original book, but it's also such a good character building thing for the grandmother as well. Like the opening of the 2021 is, is good. It creates a lot of backstory, but this... I think creates a little bit more backstory because it has those other stories mixed in there. It kind of strengthens it. And I cannot repeat enough how much the girl trapped in the painting story is my favourite part of the book. So I'm glad that it's in there. I'm glad that we have the grandmother from the book with her like smoking and her missing fingers and all of that good stuff. My favourite part of the whole thing. I'm glad that it's in the movie. We also get the spiel that witches are ordinary women with ordinary clothes and ordinary jobs, which is kind of missing from the modern one where they all kind of looked like they were auditioning for RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, in this, they definitely look a lot more normal, although it's in slight period costumes, so they look less normal to modernise, if that makes sense. But they do just look like women, which is good because then it's sort of more horrifying. This film does, I think, a lot better at making it a horror movie aimed at children rather than kind of like an action adventure fantasy movie because I feel like they're trying to be different things. One of the major changes is that Luke is American instead of English um, which makes one aspect of the story make less sense but I guess you have to put an American in it for Americans to want to watch it. So there we go. Uh, it begins with grandma telling Luke all about witches just like in the original novel and grandma's like making candles at the table and I feel like the reason I love that it's still set in like Norway at the opening is it feels very cozy um, and safe and very kind of like grandma and grandson vibes. We also find out that grandma travelled the world looking for the Grand High Witch but never managed to find her so we, we know a little bit about her backstory as like a witch hunter and we're told that witches and the grand high witch are dangerous because they don't look dangerous so i feel like one thing this film does that the book also does is to really hammer home that message of like stranger danger um that there are women out there who look like normal women and they're dangerous because they don't look dangerous which is an important message to give to children because if you tell children you know beware of the man under the bridge in the flasher mac that's really only one type of thing they should be looking out for. We see Luke's parents put him to bed and go out, and the next day the police come to inform them that they've died in a car crash, which we again don't really see. Uh, Grandma then gives Luke a hug, they pack to go to England, very similar to the book, this doesn't really deal with his like mourning his parents, which is something that I think was handled a little bit better in the more modern movie. They go to England, which is where Luke's school is, and this is a thing that doesn't make sense anymore because he's American. Okay, so maybe his parents decided to send him to a British school for some reason, but it feels like just a weird way to have the rest of the book still take place where it's meant to, in an English seaside resort, um, when 
really doesn't make a lot of sense that, that they would go there. But moving past that, while they're packing and stuff to go, Luke hangs out in his treehouse and a lady, or witch, tries to lure him down by offering him a snake, which is kind of a creepy thing, but I guess maybe small boys like snakes? I don't know. But yeah, she, she tries to like get him to come down, and it's a little bit creepier than the moments in the previous, like in the modern movie, because she kind of starts off being like semi-normal and then gets more and more insistent as he refuses to come down, and then just kind of vanishes. His grandmother gives him two mice as a present, which is nice. I like mice twos. His grandma then has a funny turn and passes out and is told that she has a mild case of diabetes. Okay, it said that she needs a holiday by the seaside, which I don't get how that would help you with diabetes, but sure. Um, so there we go. We see Luke building a little assault course for his mice and then they arrive at the hotel and do all the checking in business and we see the grand high witch arrive and there's an original character for this movie who is Irvin, uh, Miss Irvin, who is sort of the grand high witch's secretary. She's a very dog's body-ish witch who's constantly like looked down upon by the grand high witch and, and made to feel inferior. The witches are dressed like 1980s housewives, there's a lot of big hair uh, on show and on the way to the elevator, the Grand High Witch taps on a girl in a painting and then kind of smiles and carries on about her business, and the girl fades away. So, clear that this trapping a child in a painting thing is, is not a one-off, it's something that they make a habit of. Which, to me, kind of cheapens my favourite element of the story, so I was not a fan. Uh, Luke then meets Bruno, who's the same like little fat English boy who loves chocolate, nothing new here. And the manager, who is played by Rowan Atkinson, comforts a hysterical maid who says that she's seen mice, which are Luke's mice. And then Grandma threatens the manager about the mice and manages to wrangle it so that they're allowed to keep them at the hotel. There's this kind of like weird side story where Rowan Atkinson, the manager, appears to be having some sort of affair with one of the cleaning ladies and is like covering it up. And I just think it added like an interesting layer because I feel like in the modern movie they didn't give Stanley Tucci a lot to do. He didn't really seem to have much going on outside of the scenes that he was in to make him more of a character, but in this he would. The grandmother recognises the Grand High Witch in the tea room, doesn't seem to like remember where from, but they seem to like recognise each other slightly. A man comes around to lay down mouse traps. And in the tea room, Grandma suddenly notices that her tea is very sugary, like the Grand High Witch has made it sugary with magic, which is obviously no bueno for her diabetes. You should probably also not be eating Kinder Buenos. Luke goes to the little ballroom to, to train his mice, and Grandma goes for a lie down and kind of falls asleep or into a diabetic witch coma or something. The witches then arrive and Luke has to hide behind the screen. This part is the same across both movies. Interestingly, and I never noticed this when I was watching the film, but I found it when I googled it um, to find some information about it. Some of the witches in this scene, or most of the witches in this scene, are played by men who they've just put wigs on. And it kind of reminded me of something to do with either Home Alone 1 or Home Alone 2, where they show a picture of uh, his brother's girlfriend and they didn't want to actually use a girl for that because they felt bad calling like a girl this, you know, ugly girlfriend. So they just got one of like the cast or crew's sons to do it in a wig and took a picture of him. Um, so that made me laugh. The witches do the typical like wigs off, shoes off, you know, let's get some air on our itchy scalps. Um, one of the witches descends to the Grand High Witch's plan and gets turned to ash. She reveals the mouse plan, which is the same as it is across the book and other movie. Open a sweet shop, fill chocolates with mouse poison, turn children into mice. Money and profit. Bruno then arrives, and Bruno in this scene seems a little bit weirded out by everyone, which is what was missing from the modern one, where he just kind of walks in and like Anne Hathaway's been smashing furniture and incinerating people, and he just walks past all of it like... La da 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 da, nothing to see here. And in this, he just seems a little bit weirded out, but then his attention is retaken by the Grand High Witch and the chocolate, which is more believable uh, that he would initially react with suspicion and then be overcome with greed. He then transforms into a mouse boy, which is incredibly disturbing. See a four comments of puppets. 
there's a lot of green smoke involved, a lot of squeaking, and if I was a child watching this, I would be scarred for life. They then follow Luke's smell and discover him, and then they chase him, but the chase leaves the ballroom and goes out onto the terrace, uh, and the Grand High Witch um, finds out a mother sleeping next to a pram with a baby in it, and she pushes the pram down a big hill so that Luke has to like, jump out and, and stop the baby from going off a cliff, and he gets cornered by a bunch of witches on the beach and then runs back towards the hotel. We see Grandma asleep in her room. He, like, runs in and tries to wake her up, but she, she won't wake up. And then the witches kind of grab him in that room and then we cut straight back to the ballroom. And I hate this section. It's so stupid uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, because, one, obviously it doesn't happen in the book. Two, it makes the movie slightly longer when it doesn't need to be. And three... It makes no sense because suddenly you've got all of these witches flooding out of the ballroom, chasing after a small boy in full view of everyone else at this hotel, including Rowan Atkinson. Which is weird, and at first I thought because the woman on the bench next to the baby was asleep and Grandma was asleep in her room, that maybe everyone in this hotel had been put to sleep by magic or something. And maybe that would make more sense. But you can see other people like walking around who are not the witches. So it's clear some people are still awake. They just don't react to a bunch of women chasing after a small boy. <laughs> um, it's also not clear how they get him from grandmother's room back to the ballroom without being seen. Even though obviously Luke's going to be shouting or str struggling or trying to escape. It makes no sense to me and I wish it wasn't in the movie. They then mousify him, uh, which is a, a very violent mousification because of, they give him all of the extra mouse stuff. Uh, he gets turned into a mouse uh, and he meets Bruno in a little area under the stage and they go to find Grandma. The mice are alternately real mice and also tiny little mouse puppets, which works better for me than CGI um, because CGI doesn't really work for me. I don't really like it. But um, I like this because of obviously there's real mice and then fake mice and I guess maybe some CGI in there too, but it's not all CGI, which uh, I was very grateful for. Luke then hatches a plan with Grandma to steal the formula and give it to the witches. So he, he comes up with this idea. Grandma then distracts the cat with her knitting while he is lowered into the room, also with the knitting, to go in and steal the potion. He gets away with it, uh, goes back through the halls under the carpet so that's that's pretty standard, very similar to the uh, the more modern movie. What I found funny is that the maid who is having sex with the manager finds a bottle of this weird mouse potion and thinks that it's perfume. So we see her going around the Grand High Witch's room, she's like trying stuff on, and then she dabs mouse potion on her wrists and behind her ears like perfume. And later on, she has grown patches of hair there like mouse fur. And I feel like that's great. You've added that in. Obviously, it's not in the story, but it's funny. Again, kind of brings a little bit of life and interest to some of the other characters at this hotel. It broadens out the story in a small way to make it a little bit more interesting if you've already read the book. So I liked that. Miss Irvin is then banished from the witch banquet. She's been told to go and organise things in the Grand High Witch's room to like give people the money and the potion later. So she leaves and she goes like, oh, I quit, and storms off upstairs. So she's not happy, and she's also not with the other witches who are about to eat the potion. Grandma puts Luke in the kitchen with the, the little potion. I honestly don't know how they film this bit, because like the mouse has its like tail wrapped around the potion. Did they just glue a bottle to a real mouse? I hope not. Maybe it's just a really convincing puppet. I don't know. But... He gets into the kitchen, he, he puts the potion into the soup in exactly the same way that happens in the modern movie, like with going down the little ladle handle and then pouring it in. I think he drops the whole bottle in there, actually. And there is a witch working in the kitchen, which I found quite interesting because it implies like not all of the witches are actually at this meeting, which kind of goes against the whole premise of the movie. Uh, but there we go. Uh, it was interesting that you would see just random witches out and about, not in the main party. She does, however, taste the soup, so she's going mouse too. Luke has the tip of his tail cut off and runs up the chef's trousers, uh, but then he escapes. The cook who ate the mouse potion, who is a witch, begins to change. So, um, you know, things are hitting the, 
hitting the fan. Bruno's dad has requested the cress soup, which is the one with the potion in, so that's unfortunate. <laughs> the cook mouse uh, runs out to try and warn the other witches, and they're like, oh, a mouse! And then they splat her to death with their shoe. So that's kind of funny. The witches then eat the soup, uh, while Irvin eats alone in her room, so she's not eating this soup. Grandmother gets hold of, <laughs> of uh, Bruno's dad's soup and just kind of, like, throws it. Uh, like, just gets rid of it. And then hands him Bruno and then sends him to confront the Grand High Witch. Because she's like, hey, that lady did this to your son. The transformation begins. All of the witches begin to, like, shake and turn into, like, weird, creepy, mutant-looking rats. It's great. The hotel staff then attack them with, like, knives and cleavers and rolling pins. It's super violent. Again, this is a little bit darker than the more modern movie, where I think they just, like, put them in buckets or, like, cover them, or they get killed off screen or exterminated. I can't really remember. It's been too long. But, yeah, you don't see, like, Stanley Tucci running around with a blood-covered meat cleaver hacking away at rats. So, that was great. Grandma gets to give her little victory speech about getting all the witches. And then Irving comes in to see what all the commotion is and is like, oh, wow. And then the Grand High Witch gets killed by Rowan Atkinson with a meat cleaver. Uh, Luke then takes a label. And I thought this was quite clever because it's like, it's not in the book, but it's something that a mouse could do. So he takes a luggage label with their address on it back to the Grand High Witch's room and he ties it to the big case full of money and potion. So it will be delivered to their house. As they leave, we see Miss Irvin watching them from a window. Back in America, England, I guess England. Let's just say this is the house they're living in in England. We see Luke riding the like little model railway thing that he made for his mice. This is something that was brought across into the modern movie, like sort of similarly and he goes to see grandmother when he hears a knock at the door and the trunk being delivered and he says he has a plan to track down all the witches in america now so i guess they're going back to america or they are already there and not sure because they've done all the ones in england and grandmother and luke then have the talk about how mice don't live very long and grandmother wonders if maybe a good witch could turn him back so this kind of invents the existence of good witches which is not something that was in the book they then go to bed and Luke's bed is in like a little doll's house and it's very cute. We then see Irvin arrive outside and she's dressed a lot fancier now and has her own car. She gestures and like a beam of light goes through the window, hits Luke's doll's house and it begins to shake and quiver. And there's a kind of very CGI special effect -y thing where he turns back into a boy breaking the, the, the doll's house. She then sends his mice up floating to him so that he gets his pet mice back, which not really sure what happened to them like when they were at the hotel but why didn't they take them home with them bad pet ownership and, and she conjures his glasses back which i think got lost when he became a mouse so she's obviously this like good witch she's come here to do this for them maybe just because they took out the grand high witch so now she's in charge or maybe because she's actually decided to be good it's not really clear but she is wearing white so i assume that's a movie shorthand for she's a good guy now like the whole black hat and white hat thing. But I don't know why, because she was perfectly on board with this plan to turn all the children into mice previously. So there we go. She leaves and they make this comment like, oh, maybe she's going to go turn Bruno back so that maybe Bruno doesn't have to be a mouse anymore. And it's now the end of the movie. So I did some Googling because I'd kind of always thought that that was my favourite ending to the story, not the one in the book, uh, which is basically the same as the one in the modern movie. Apparently, Roald Dahl really hated this ending. Hated it, hated it, hated it. And when they filmed the end of the movie, they filmed both versions. Like, the ending from the story, where it's just like, he stays a mouse. And him and the grandmother are both going to die around the same time. And then this ending, which was a little bit more Hollywood, a little bit more happily ever after. And this version tested a lot better, so it's the one they ended up releasing it with. And Roald Dahl was not happy about this. So... I kind of get that, like, you don't really want people to be changing your story. It's still kind of my favourite ending. It's not perfect, because uh, uh, we don't really know why Ms. Irvin went good, or if she even did. Because, like, when the Grand High Witch does that thing where she's, like, kind of taunting the little girl in the painting and making her fade away, 
Miss Irvin copies her afterwards like she wants to be the Grand High Witch. She doesn't seem to have any moral problem with, you know, disappearing slash killing children. And yet at the end of the movie, she suddenly, goody goody two shoes, I'm going to turn you back into a boy now. It doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but I think it is slightly more satisfying, especially I think to children, to see the main character be fixed, to not have to deal with the shortened lifespan of a mouse, uh, which can be, it's, it's quite a grim thing to think about as a child, so I, I get why they changed it. I think, to be honest, that both films have their good points and bad points, and uh, both of them do good things and some things that I just didn't find as interesting or entertaining to watch, and I think the 1991 is aimed at being more of kind of a slight horror, and that's maybe why it has the kind of cult status that it does, that and the amazing puppets. Whereas it feels more like the modern one is more of a true adaptation and more a fantasy kind of adventure, which has fewer horror elements to it. So I'm not going to say which one's like a good and bad film, because they're both pretty good, um, but they, they are very different. So it depends, I guess, on what you're looking for in an adaptation of The Witches which one you're going to prefer. But just in terms of like the way it was made, like the the lack of obvious CGI, I kind of prefer the older one. But the newer one has good points too and, and more interesting elements as well. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Let me know which one was your favourite and if there's any other films like children's films with witches in that you'd like me to look at because I feel like I don't do many of those and I need to rectify that immediately. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!